All right, all right. Red Nation, today we're going to be talking about the X-ray spectra. This is actually having to do with the relative energy of the X-rays that are used, passed through the body, and then detected on your image receptor in X-ray imaging. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. First off, if you remember from our discussion on the X-ray beam, we have X-rays that are coming in, and if we think about them passing through a given unit of area here, we often think about it like a millimeter by a millimeter, and then also in a given snapshot of time. We say, how many X-rays are passing through a given area and then in a given snapshot of time? And if we wrap into that the average energy that those x-rays have then what we're talking about is the beam intensity that's the beam intensity where we're taking into account just a snapshot in area and a snapshot in time so that we can really identify the beam intensity and if we want to break that down further into essentially how many x-rays of different energies are coming in we can talk about something that we call the X-ray spectra. Hopefully you've seen our videos on Bremsstrahlung and characteristic. Those are the two interactions that govern the way that X-rays are made on your X-ray tube. Like we've talked about, this is what's called a polyenergetic spectra. And when we draw the X-ray spectra, what we're actually drawing is on the X-axis, we're drawing the energy and that we're talking about it in KeV, kilo electron volts. And on the Y axis, we're drawing the number of X-ray photons. What the spectra shows is really just relative. How many X-rays are at the lower energies versus at the higher energies? Bremsstrahlung, as we've talked about, makes a nice continuous distribution. If you had just a perfect Bremsstrahlung distribution in the X-rays actually were just generated inside the anode and they didn't have to leave the anode and pass through the tube and pass through additional filters. You would have something that looks like this, where you have more X-rays at the lower energy and then fewer at the higher energies. In reality, what happens is you have filtration both in the tube itself, through the window of the tube, then there's often additional filtration to try and remove those low energy x-rays because they're not very good at penetrating the body. We don't want them to just stop in the body. We'd actually like to have a more what we call dose efficient x-ray beam, which means eliminating these low energy x-rays that don't have a big chance of getting through the patient. That's on the Bremsstrahlung side. Most of our x-rays are coming from that side. On the other side is what we'd call characteristic radiation. That's what generates the little spikes in your X-ray spectra. If we add those two things together, we get our smooth curve from Bremsstrahlung and our two spikes, or could be multiple spikes from characteristic. That is our X-ray spectra. Then to keep things simple, what we like to do is focus on a couple of descriptors of our spectra. One we call the quality of the X-ray beam. One we call the quantity of the X-ray beam. And how do these things actually impact the X-ray spectra themselves? The beam quality is actually a descriptor of the energy of the X-ray beam. If you took an X-ray beam like this, and then you added a filter or changed the KV, or did something that changed the energy distribution, that you got a different spectra that looked like this. You can see this spectra over here has a higher average energy. This spectra over here has a lower average energy. These two spectra have different beam quality. On the other hand, if you had the same shape but a different number of x-rays under the curve, again, the drawings aren't perfect here, but these are supposed to be the same shape but a different number of x-rays under the curve, in this case, the number of x-rays we're calling quantity, we're only changing the beam quantity. If we change the tube current that we denote by the MA, that's gonna change the beam quantity, but it will not change the shape of your x-ray spectra. Then we also wanna think about the x-ray spectra 
and the spectra, namely for the primary, the x-rays as they're coming in, and then the exit, which is also called the remnant or the leftover x-ray beam as they're coming out of the patient. If you had an incident spectra here, the x-rays then pass through the patient, the intensity, the number of x-rays that are coming out is going to be lower. And then typically, they're also going to have a slightly higher average energy because the low energy photons are preferentially attenuated by any filter, including the patient as a filter it themselves. That effect where the beam average energy gets higher, that is called beam hardening. We have other videos on that as well. Those are your basics of the X-ray spectra. See our video on Bremsterling and characteristic radiation. Make sure you to make sure you understand how that spectra is actually generated and the fun physics behind the X-ray spectra.